In the movie Passengers, humans hibernate for a 120-year voyage to a distant planet for a new life. We woke up 90 years too soon. Finding a habitable planet is not so far-fetched for Tiffany Kataria, a NASA scientist who studies planets that orbit another star or exoplanets. The ultimate goal of studying exoplanets is to, to really find an Earth twin, to find um, some other planet out there that's Earth-like that maybe eventually we could colonize one day for ex and explore. In the movie, the passengers travel on a rotating spaceship to create gravity. The idea is not just science fiction, says aerospace engineer John Bradford. So that's one of the main uh, ways we're going to mitigate some of the challenges and ch uh, things that come out in microgravity environment damage to the human body in terms of bone uh, demineralization and muscle atrophy. Uh, having this artificial gravity uh, solves those problems and uh, rotating it is, is the best way to do it, I think. As for hibernating in space, that's what Bradford's company, Spaceworks Enterprises, is researching with the hope that it could be used for human flight to Mars. One of the possible effects of spending time in space and long-term microgravity is intracranial pressure, which impairs an astronaut's vision. Bradford says that's something hibernation or human status can help, among other benefits. Actually cooling down the body, reducing the metabolism, reduces that intracranial pressure. It's one of the treatments here on Earth. Uh, we reduce the amount of food they need, the amount of oxygen. We can put them in a very small space, as you see here. Bradford week. says his company would first start human status for two weeks. That two weeks is within current medical technology. It's limited data set, but that has been done before. Um, but ultimately, to get the full benefits, we want to be able to go to five or six months. And uh, you know that will take years, uh, you know, maybe 15 years or so, 20 years to really fully understand understand all the impacts upon the crew, but for the shorter stay and the shorter duration of these two-week cycles, you know, we, we're optimistic we could be ready for, to support the first missions to Mars. So we just got to convince NASA. As for human space flights beyond Mars and our solar system, that's where science ends and the fiction begins. So the closest planet we know of that's actually, it's actually close to an Earth mass. Um, it's called Proxima Centauri b. Proxima Cen is, uh, is 4.2 light years away. And so that's about 25 trillion miles from here. The Juno spacecraft is orbiting Jupiter um, at 150 miles, 1,000 miles per hour. And uh, so relative to Jupiter, but if we think about that same spacecraft getting maybe a gravity assist and going to Proxima Centauri b, um, that would take at that same speed um, you know, tens of thousands of years. So, uh, so really, you know, the, the technology still needs to make that leap, I think, to be able to achieve um, uh, light speed travel or close to light speed travel. It may take years of technology to catch up to the imagination, but audiences can so still experience the excitement of space travel by going to movie theaters. Elizabeth Lee, VOA News, Los Angeles. There's a reason we woke up early.